Developing now in Suffolk, firefighters battled towering flames and frigid temperatures early this morning. This was the scene on Dorchester Road in Smithtown just before 4 a.m. Police tell us the fire started in the garage and spread to the rest of the home. No one was hurt. The cause is under investigation. Good morning, everyone. I'm Jasmine Anderson. Now to a story you saw first in Newsday. Suffolk police are investigating the unauthorized release of body camera footage showing officers killing an armed man in Bayshore. Video of the shooting was posted on social media and shows officers gunning down Tyquell Woodson. Police say the 33-year-old stabbed an officer multiple times before he was shot. The acting commissioner says the shooting was, quote, justified. The Internal Affairs Bureau is now investigating. Still no word on the cause of the senior housing complex fire in Plainview. That's now claimed two lives. Police announced yesterday that 74-year-old Lynn Citron died from her injuries. 84-year-old Teresa Calcell was found dead in her apartment when the flames were put out Sunday. One resident told us how she jumped into action. Then I went out and saw where it was coming from. Then I came back in and nobody was coming out. And I started ringing the bells again till I got everybody out. We're, we're a family here. You know, we all watch out for everybody. Um, um, but I hope everybody is safe where they are now. Just devastating, the town of Oyster Bay Housing Authority, which operates the apartment, says 21 residents were living in the building. A tentative deal to avoid a nurse strike here on the island. Nurses at LIJ Valley Stream and Peconic Bay Medical Center in Riverhead will vote on the agreement with Northwell Health today. The union contract improves staffing standards, pay, and pension benefits. More than 700 workers at both hospitals threatened to walk off the job this week if progress was not made. One man's trash is another man's treasure. Today, the village of Malvern is giving you the chance to own a garbage truck. Today, the village is auctioning off the oldest truck in its sanitation fleet. The 2001 Mack truck has more than 140,000 miles on it, but the village says is well maintained. Proceeds from its sale will help offset rising costs and fund new equipment with safety upgrades. It helps with keeping the guys safer on the back of the truck, less, less workers' comp injuries, um, and it's easier and more efficient because also it has backup cameras on the, on the garbage trucks and more safety lights for the motorists to see. The current bid price is $5,600. A 2013 Ford Taurus Interceptor, previously used by the police department, is also up for auction. Babylon Town is spending over $3 million to upgrade waste storage containers. The containers hold leftover ash from the town's Asheville in West Babylon. The town says the new glass and metal fused tanks offer enhanced durability against corrosive lichate. Only a news day. New focus on mindfulness in one East End school. The staff at Little Flowers School District in Wading River is learning how to guide students through stress and adversity using breathing regulation and movement. The district received a grant from the State Office of Mental Health to start the program. It aims to equip students, many who have experienced trauma, with coping mechanisms. I think it's going to be very impactful for us, um, just as far as being able to um, assist the residents and also the students to be able to really get centered and focused, be present in where they are right now in the moment, and then now we can focus on further de-escalating the situation. Along with Little Flower, Bayshore, Greenport, and Patchogue Medford School Districts also received the funding. Islander great Bobby Nystrom stealing the show at the Islanders Stadium Series watch party. The opportunity for fans to meet and greet Nystrom was the centerpiece of the event Sunday at UBS Arena. Over a thousand fans enjoyed outdoor skating, interactive games, and large screens showing the Islanders game against the Rangers. I think that you want to go against the teams that have rivalries. And needless to say, uh, I mean, the Islanders could play with Philadelphia because we certainly have a rivalry, but it's better than it's the Rangers. The event could be viewed as a trial run for the 2026 NHL All-Star Weekend, which will be hosted by UBS Arena. 
Checking out your hyper-local weather forecast for you, your day planner. Sunny today, highs around 35 degrees. Tonight, lows in the 20s. Tomorrow, partly cloudy with a high around 40. A look at your seven-day forecast coming up. Long Island weather is brought to you by Home Tax Saver, PTRC Incorporated. Prices at the pump. We could be paying less for gas this summer. Sherry Einhorn has a story you'll see only in Newsday. Paying at the pump is kind of a crapshoot. You just never know what you're going to get. I passed by the other day and it was over three and uh, I still had a quarter of a tank. So I knew I was doing only local driving, so I said I'm going to play the futures. It was worth the wait. He paid six cents less per gallon today. So you feel like a winner. I feel like a winner. Now, if you've been paying attention to prices lately, you may have noticed something a little unusual for us here on the island. At $3.20, the Long Island average for regular unleaded is actually less than the national average of $3.28. It's a sort of sticker shock for for this college student who says she's used to paying way, way more where she's from. I'm from the Bay Area. Um, average gas price is probably about $4.50 um, per gallon. So it's definitely a big difference coming here. While that is a big difference, drivers here say they're still hoping to see pump prices drop even further like they were a few weeks ago. Well, I consider that please that the price should be lower than $3. Some drivers are using apps to track prices and also rewards programs for money back. We've seen prices in 23 states go up by about 10 cents per gallon in the last week, including New Jersey. We're up between two and four cents in the rest of the tri-state area and up four cents per gallon in the last week on Long Island. And when it comes to saving money, every cent counts. I always pay attention to gas prices and I come here actually from the North Shore to this station to get my gas because it's probably about 20 cents less a gallon. 20 cents less? Yes. I'm Shari Einhorn for Newsday TV. That relief is going to go a long way for so many drivers. Read more about gas prices on Newsday.com. Click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. A Long Island wrestler was given 12 weeks to live, and against all odds, he beat the cancer threatening his life and returned to the ring. Jamie Stewart has a story you'll see only in Newsday. Sean Wachter is a walking and wrestling miracle. I always say that uh, wrestling is my rock in the storm. And to understand Sean's story, we need to go back to the eye of the storm. A former sports star at Kellenberg High School, Sean used to have dreams of becoming a pro wrestler, but a broken neck in 2012 dashed those dreams temporarily. I had to relearn how to walk again, unfortunately. Little did Sean know things would get much, much worse. In 2016, Sean's life changed forever. He suffered a stroke due to an undiagnosed brain tumor and collapsed in his family home. While struggling on the ground, Sean managed to pick up his cell phone and call his dad. I was, couldn't even communicate with him because I could not understand him. I know for a fact I sounded quite garbled and gurgled on the phone and essentially, you know, crying out for help. I come through his door and here he is, down here on the floor, trying to pull himself up on a table. John rushed his son to the hospital where Sean was later diagnosed with a rare form of stage four melanoma cancer, which had spread to his spinal cord fluid. Sean was given a life expectancy of 12 weeks. His dad let him know. I can't imagine what it must have been like for you to have to tell your son the news. The most difficult thing I've ever done in my life. But like many other sons, Sean had a hard time listening to what his dad had to say. 
you tell me I can't do something, well, sit back and watch me do it. Sean began radiation treatment, but still suffered from seizures. But then, after genomic testing, it was determined Sean's melanoma had a mutation, and he was put into an experimental clinical trial. We kind of had the landmark moments, and uh, we reached stability in the fall of 2018. Uh, going into 2019, we started to show signs of regression, and then by July of 2022, we received the all clear. Roughly six years after his diagnosis, Sean had a new lease on life. How many people in this room have been affected or had cancer? Please raise your hand. And he's using it to be a tag team partner for other cancer fighters. I don't really have much to celebrate because I still have brothers and sisters stuck in this fight. With his growing Instagram following, Sean is becoming an inspiration to other fighters around the world. And he's hoping his story, unlike his cancer, spreads. After everything I've been through, and I wouldn't change it for a bit because cancer was the most beautiful thing that ever happened to me in the sense that it gave me such a unique perspective on life. But now it allows me to chase my dream, but at the same time, as I said, hopefully give hope to others. For Newsday TV, I'm Jamie Stewart. Such an inspiration. Read more exclusive stories just like this on Newsday.com. Just click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. Information about communities is lost if you don't have local reporters. And if there's no one reporting, how do you know what's going on in your community? Newsday, covering Long Island like no one else can. I'm Jasmine Anderson. Thank you so much for watching. We'll leave you with a look at your hyperlocal seven-day forecast.